When I come off the show, I got a lot of abuse for being like overweight and fat. I was a size 10 um, and all the girls in there were, they were all beautiful, but they were smaller than me. They were like size six, size eight. But I'd come off the show and there was a family in the airport and it was actually the father of the family. And he started shouting abuse at me saying, you've been chucked off the show because you've got too many stretch marks. I think I'd be lying if I said I didn't scrutinise my body before Love Island. Every person has some sort of negative thought about their appearance. I'd starve myself, I'd count calories endlessly. I'd literally wake up, weigh myself. I'd have a glass of water, weigh myself. The first time speaking about my eating disorder was really, really hard. I was a model but also a professional athlete and trying to you know, get the body of what I thought a model should look like, being skinny, ended up in um, being bulimic. I'd then eat something and I'd go to the toilet and I'd spew it all up again. And then I'd question why I ate it and I'd be angry with myself and I'd torture myself for it. I had a boob job, um, a breast enlargement when I was 18. Some of the comments that I get, people were going on about my boobs being so far apart. That hit home because obviously that's something that I was massively affected by. I came out to a lot of positive comments, but then a lot of negative comments about my body. And this then led me to have surgery. I had liposuction, I had a breast uplift, and this is all due to the trolling that I received. I've had it all, everything. Body shame me and compare me to someone else, call me fat call me too skinny. I remember there was a few comments on my Instagram and I got really sort of upset about that. That was one thing that got me really down because I was so used to just being in the gym and having meal prep. Whereas when you come out doing 120 nightclub PAs and eating service station food, I'm not going to look the same. I thought the whole world thinks that I'm really fat and really ugly. I was like, is this going to be my life now? Are people just going to be abusing me for the way that I look? You get papped when you go to a restaurant, you get papped when you go down the street, and that one picture where you're looking a bit different and they've made your arm a bit bigger and you look at it and you go, oh my gosh. Even going down the shop, like, do I look, I can't go out the house looking butters because you know everyone's going to see you, like, it's like, recognise you, so yeah, it is, it is daunting. I could sit at home and I could read through loads and loads of articles and read all the hate and that would make, that would get me down. Instagram can be such a dark place, like, I do it to myself, you go through and you see perfect photos of, like, perfect girls. We are forced to constantly compare ourselves to the most beautiful people in the world and they are on our screens and can be on our screens 24 hours a day. If you're looking at someone's picture and they look absolutely perfect in front of a sports car and whatever, chances are that's been heavily edited and it probably isn't their car. When you've got all these beautiful Instagram bodies that are just like, I don't know, their hips are there, their, their waist is that small, their face is like that, and I'm like, how, how do you do that? Oh my God! But then you realise, wait, is that edited? <laughs> With the right lighting, good hair and makeup, the right angle, you can get that split second, but that's all it is. And then I go back to looking like rubbish. <laughs> it's just a moment in time, it's a, it's a picture at the end of the day. I, honestly, I sometimes think, if Instagram broke down, who would you be? When I found out I was pregnant, I actually had liposuction like two months before. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, now I'm going to be carrying a baby, my stomach's going to get bigger. And as my stomach got bigger throughout my pregnancy, I was like, you know what, this is such a beautiful thing, this is like natural, this is some building human inside me. And I didn't care too much. And um, obviously I had an emergency C-section, so now I'm living with a scar. And it's going to be there for the rest of my life. But I look at it and I think it's so beautiful because I carried this baby. I look at myself in the mirror, I'm actually more pleased with myself than I've ever, ever been. It's okay to have them, that's normal to have insecurities, it's just how you deal with them. Nobody in this world is perfect. Everyone feels the same about themselves and everyone has their levels of insecurity. When my mum was passing away, I was with her, you know, in her last few weeks as she died. As I saw how her body was shrinking and how unhealthy she was and how the cancer was eating her body, you know, I appreciated what was going on inside me more and how to take care of it and not put myself at risk for the sake of looking better. Love yourself. That is my main piece of advice because it's something that I think a lot of us don't do. Save yourself the heartache and save yourself the battle and the mental battle you're going to have with yourself. There's nothing more valuable than loving yourself. No way. No way.